So um, I'm going to be teaching you a little bit on how easy dosage calculation can be. And we tend to make it so difficult in our brains. So I'm going to show you how to pick things out and how to use them. So let's go ahead and let me share one of the um, handouts. Now, I just put this one in the chat box. So that one's there uh, for you. Again, when I send this recording, I'm going to send it with you. So it'll be attached to it so that you're going to have that to refer back to, OK? Um, I'm also going to do another one, some bits and pieces of it, because there's different labels. And different labels tend to confuse students also. And there's no reason. It's the numbers we have to worry about and not the labels, OK? MEQs is a milligram is a unit. Um, but sometimes units go, oh, what's that all about? So let's go here and just first of all, let's look at a couple different things. Remember always that every label has to be the same. Milligrams, milligrams, grams, grams, units, units, milliunits. They all have to be the same to fill out a problem. And usually you're going to see more of this in your things like mics per kilo per minute per hour type thing. And I'll go into that if you all want me to. It's not in PEDS, but it's just as easy as doing these questions for me, okay? So when we're going from grams, going back down to the right, so grams, milligrams, micrograms to the right, what we are going to do is take that number and multiply. And it's because you have one gram. Then you have milli, which is like a thousand grams. So the number's bigger, you have to multiply. And that's how I remember to go which way, right? If I'm going from milligrams to grams or milli units to units, I know that I'm going to have to make the number smaller. I'm going to divide. So that's just a quick conversion to look at. I've written down just a list there, kilograms, grams, milligrams, micrograms, and I just put it there for you as something to uh, remember. Now, I only use three formulas. I know in ratio proportion, you have put all these things and cross them out and add them. And I think when you're adding things and taking them out, that's when errors were made. And I don't understand it to tell you the truth. And I'm being very honest here. So when I started teaching at Fortis, they, I went in to teach pediatrics and they said, can you teach pharmacology? And I said, I guess I could fake it. <laughs> well, pharmacology was a lot more than I thought, but I, of course, I had to study. I had to learn how to present it that you could understand. And then I had to learn dosage calc again. Thank goodness I'm logical, which is all math is, and I'm good at math. So I figured this out that only three formulas are needed. So let me describe those formulas and why there's only three. Whether it's mics per kilogram per minute or six milligrams per hour, it's still a dose that you have to be delivered to that patient, right? It's only a dose. So when you're talking about milligrams, units, micrograms, you really don't need the label on it because they're all the same. And they actually, a milligram over milligram equals one. So they go away anyway. So you're only left with numbers, right? So don't let that confuse you. So you have a dose and then you're given some sort of the pharmacy sent up. Uh, what's available, you know, is this amount of medication in this quantity. So that's a DHQ question, as I call it. I know you have different uh, letters, but I call it desire over what I have on hand or what's available times the quantity. How much did it come in? And I always put it over one because I want to be able to keep those lines equal so that it doesn't get crooked, especially sometimes you're writing, you're too big, it doesn't fit, you go crooked, and then you times the wrong stuff. And, and that's where errors made. So that's why I put that there. Then there's two more formulas. One is just mLs per hour. And that's all about volume and time. So you need to see when you look at that problem, what formula do I need to use? Is it a dose to be delivered 
or is it a volume and time to be delivered? Okay, that's where confusion comes about. And then the other one is drop factors, the drip factor. And that has to do with how many drops a minute a, a, it has to drip in order to get what you want delivered, okay? You know, years ago, I used to have to count drops in order to figure out mLs per hour. They didn't have those roller clamps. They didn't have machines. They just had just the clamp that you had to slow it or fast it. It wasn't even the one that you could turn and dial in. So I really got used to counting drops as a brand new nurse. Um, I'm the night shift with a little flashlight, not waking patients up. So three formulas, a dose or ML volume and time to be delivered, or you'll see drip factor, drop factor. It's usually 10, 12, 15. Those are usually your numbers. And remember, always keep it straight by putting it over one. One of the common things, common errors done by students is that when you're doing the mLs per hour, you forget to times it by 60. Or you try to break down the problem, you know, like crossing things out before you start. I advise you, don't. Get the information from the formula, write it down, and then figure it out. So with that introduction, let's look at number one. So whenever you see prescribed, ordered, need to deliver, it is a dose. It's a dose of something. You don't need the name of it. I mean, it's nice to know what the med is, but figuring out dosage calc is figuring out a dose. So number one, prescribed, the D is 100 milligrams. Do you see that? Makes sense, right? And then the pharmacy said available or the pharmacy sent or something of that sort, available to deliver. Is that medication in, what do I have on hand? It's 60 milligrams and it comes in two mLs. So I'm gonna share my screen here. And what I'm going to do, let's see. it didn't like the way I did it. Let's do it this way. So right now we have 100 milligrams. And this is my dose, right? And I have on hand, it told me 60 milligrams. And my quantity, it came in two mLs. And remember, I put it over one to keep this all equal, the top and the bottom. You will from now on multiply the top and then divide the bottom. There's several reasons for that. Number one is we get to mics per kilo per minute. You have to do it that way. It doesn't work the other way. Number two, many times, not all of them, but many times when you divide and then multiply, you're going to find you have a something you have to round. Why would you want to do an extra step that you could make an error from? Correct? So 100 times 2 is 200 divided by... 60. And if you see milligrams over milligrams cross out, so you don't need the label, but you want mLs to be delivered, that's your last label. So you're going to have something mL as your answer. Do you see how we got there? Sometimes I find students say, well, it says this, and that's why I did the, uh, with the time 60 mLs per hour formula. Well, we know that this comes off and we know ML's there, so we still come out with that. So we have 200 divided by 60 equals, does somebody get something? 3.3333. Good. 3.3, okay. system, please. Very good. I mean, just so repeating 333. Three. Now, the next thing you do before you write anything down is go back to your problem. And that problem says you could have just put three, three, right? Or three or the whole number. You'd be wrong. That question wants it to the nearest tenth. So your answer is 3.3. Please make sure when you get your answer, go back and look at it. Okay. 
let's look at the next question and I'm going to have you tell me. So Ellen, number two, the healthcare provider orders one gram of a med. The nurse has available that medicine in 250 milligrams per five mLs. What formula am I going to use? Uh, would you use um, the dimensional analysis? So I have three formulas, the desire over half times quantity or mLs per hour or drops per minute. Is that a dose you need to deliver? Um, yes. It is, it's a dose. It's a dose. There's nothing about time there and there is nothing about um, drop factor. So it's definitely a DHQ question. So our dose here is one gram, right? And then what did, what did the pharmacy send you? What do you have? How many milligrams they sent you? Our 250 milligrams. Grams per five milliliters. And five mLs, very good. All right, so let's do that one. You have to convert. Now, I warn you, don't convert before you're ready. Let me see. Hold on, this is acting weird tonight. Getting rid of this. Give me one second. Do it again. Okay, it's just presented itself with a sidebar and instead of a normal bar. Okay, so we decided it's a dose. So it's a DH times Q. So now we went back at over one, keep it straight. So we decided the dose is one gram. Don't do anything, don't make any changes. Put what that question has down first because that's where errors come in, you know, also. Well, we know grams and milligrams, apple and oranges, they don't mix. So we're going to change one gram. So we're going from grams to milligrams. So there's going to be more. So we know that's a thousand milligrams, correct? And we're just going to rewrite the problem. We know milligram over milligram goes away. That's why we don't need labels. And we know mLs are left, so we know that's going to be our answer. So 1,000 times 5 is 5,000. And then 250 times 1 is 250. And all we're going to do is divide it there. Printed. And we get 20 mLs. Did everybody get that? Yes. Is that making sense? Yes. Ellen, does that make sense to you? Yes. Okay. I, I want you to keep up with me. Again, if you're not, let me know. All right. Let's go to another one. All right. Many questions in pediatrics is all about figuring out a dose, right? So it's just figuring out how much for every kilogram, because all of your doses in pediatrics are milligrams, micrograms, whatever grams, units per kilogram. That's the way they're listed. So if we look at question number three, what do we need to look at? Well, we want to give 0.15 milligrams per kilogram and we have 40 pounds so let's go and we want to again let's say round to the nearest tenth all right we'll forget that but we'll go back and look at it so we have 40 pounds 
and we have 0 0.15 milligrams per kilogram. So we need a dose. And that's all we need is an answer. So we need kilograms. When you look at kilograms and you look at pounds, pounds will always be the bigger number. And I'll describe it as this. I weigh 100 kilograms. I don't weigh 200 pounds. Because I don't want to say that. 100 sounds really good, doesn't it? So always think kilograms, smaller number. That's how I remember I'm going to divide this by 2.2. And you got, now, whatever you get on your calculator, because you're just doing a dose, leave it there, okay? And I got 18.181818. 0.15 times 18.1818. And I'm going to get a number. So all I'm going to do is take that number and multiply by how many of those doses every kilogram gets a 0 0.15. So you multiply it. That's all you do times 0 0.15. And what did you get? 2.727. Never mind. My calculator's not working for me. 2.7. All right, so it's another repeating. So it's 2.727. So we know that it's to the 10th. So it's 2.7. Does everybody know how to round? Do you know when to go up, when to go down? Yes. Okay. If that two was a five, it would be 2.8. 0. 0.5, 0. 0.6, 0. 0.7, 8. It would go up, but lower than that. It always goes down um, and stays at the same number that it's at. So 2.7 is your answer. All right. So now you know how to do a dose because there's always one of those on your exam. All right. Next thing we're going to do is. I'm sorry. Can I ask a question about that problem? Absolutely. Okay. So, um, so whenever we have a problem like that and it's asking us for, um, to go from pounds to kilograms, we're always going to write out the whole number. Like, for example, we're always going to do like the, how I leave it, it there. I, I don't round it. Why do I okay. want to make a mistake? I'd make a mistake if I rounded it sometimes. Right. Okay. That's it what I'll and it's not going to hurt the answers, not going to affect it. It's not going to okay. be different. I know what you're asking. It's okay. better to leave it because if sometimes you change it, you make it wrong and you don't okay. want to do that. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Okay. No, we had a welcome. math pass here and I was confused with that. So thank you. Okay. No, you're welcome. All right. We're going to do number four. Now, number four is one of those questions. Students go, oh my goodness, it's units, it's, I don't understand, it's heparin, oh my. Well, the doctor, the client is prescribed. The doctor orders, you need to administer. It's a dose. It's a dose over what you have times quantity. So, Ikea, what dose am I giving in number four? Um... The client is prescribed cleaners. So I have available 25. What's my dose? What's my dose I need to deliver? Um, the client is prescribed. That's your dose. 25. Oh, so there's 2,500 units? Yes. And then they sent up a bag of 250 mLs or quantity. And inside that bag is 25,000 units of heparin. So what do we have on hand? What is the, uh, that? So that's your H would be 
25,000. And the quantity it came in is 250 mLs. Is everybody there? Everybody understanding that? Yes. So let's go ahead and do that. So will it be 25? Yeah. Oh, you're already ahead of me. Look at you. Good job. You know, I'm just putting you, it's not a proper abbreviation to let you know. You're supposed to write it all out. But just because I'm just putting a U, okay? So again, units get crossed off because anything over itself is always one. So don't even worry about it. And again, multiply the top and then divide by the bottom. So we have 2,500 times 250. And that comes here. Now, I highly suggest every time you do a math problem, times it out two times. If you get the same number twice, you know I have the right answer. Sometimes my fingers, my nails, it gets caught. I get the wrong number and I have a wrong number. You have time to do it. Don't rush through it, okay? Always do it twice. So we're going to take that number and now just divide it by 25,000. Just whatever you have in the calculator, leave it there. Now divide it. And your answer is 25. And mLs is all we have left. So the answer is 25 mLs. Very good. Isn't that easy? Whether it's units, whether it's heparin, it doesn't matter. All you need to figure out it's a dose. There's no time and there's no volume. Okay, there's volume there. There's no time. So it's okay. Now, sometimes you'll see distractors to say you give it four times a day. Okay, but that's not time. It's doses to be delivered. Okay, that's the difference. Let's get rid of that. All right, now who wants to do question number five? You first of all, tell me what formula am I going to use and why, and help me set it up. Um, I I'm can try. The, Go ahead, Andrea. Good. Um, <laughs> the dose prescribed is the three hundred and fifty mLs. Is it a dose? It is not a dose. It is a time because okay. it's staying 45 minutes. Good job. So we do volume in mLs over time in minutes times 60. That's the formula. Now, this one you're lucky with because it already is in minutes. Sometimes it will say two and a half hours and you'll see it one and a half hours, four and a half hours, 4.5 times 60. That's all you do. 2.5 times 60. Don't try to figure it out, okay? Just in the calculator, whatever it is. Don't get that half and go, I don't know what to do with it. 4.5. 0. 0.5 is half, okay? So let's set this one up. Good job. So we have 350 mLs. Time in minutes, 45 minutes. It's already there. And don't forget the 60, okay? Don't forget to do that. So again, multiply the top, divide by the bottom. So 350 times 60. Did everybody get this with me? Three fifty times sixty. Yes, we did. And then we'll divide it by forty five. Four six six point six 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 six. So when you're working with MLs per hour, you're working with drops per minute. This always goes to a whole number, 
Okay. So what's going to be my answer? 467. That's 467. Very good. And it's MLs and it's per hour. It's telling you right there. Okay. Now you see how the MLs per hour, how you differentiate from a heparin or a insulin or whatever. It, it's still um, MLs per hour. Dosage, you know, that you want to deliver, we're going to see the MLs left. So we know it's like that too. Okay. Any dose you want to give, you put it in a dose. As long as you have what you have been given and then um, you put whatever volume it was delivered into you. All right, let me go into some more here. <clears throat> All right, I want to do number three on these ML per hours, okay? So three, simple. It's you want a flow rate. Flow rate is mLs per hour. And you're given a volume, and number three, of 1,000. And you want to give it over 10 hours. So how do we set this up? Well, it's volume in mLs. Oh, that's CC, ml is the same thing. Milliliters or cc's. I'm going to put two cc's in a three ml syringe. You've heard things of that sort. It's the same thing. They're used synonymously all the time. And that's why I show you that. So CC, 1,000 CC is still MLs. So we have 1,000 MLs because it's volume in MLs over time in minutes. Well, 10 hours. Well, we'll write that out to start with. So let me show you how you do that one. So volume in mLs over time in minutes, but that's hours. And again, we have to put the hour of 60 in there, right? 60 minutes. 10 hours, how do we figure minutes? Well, one hour is 60. So all we do is times 10 times 60, right? 60 minutes in each hour, and that's going to come in time in minutes. Now, I have some students who like to just cross off the 60 and 60 and then divide it. I tell you not to do that. If you understood what I just said, okay. If not, don't worry about it. I would prefer you do it longhand, no shortcuts, because then there's going to be a less incidence of errors. So 1,000 times 60, let's do the top and divide it by 10 times 60. This is 600 minutes now. We just cross that off. So 1,000 times 60. Equals 60,000. Divided by 600. And there's several ways you can do this. Again, I know some of you have been taught to cross off zeros. I still, I would just divide it. You've got calculators. When I went to nursing school, I didn't have a calculator. It was all longhand. So I knew all the tricks. You don't have to do it. And I highly suggest don't do anything where you could make an error. So 60,000 divided by 600, and it's 100 mLs per hour is the answer. Do you see how that was done? Maybe, maybe uh, 1,000 divided to 10, because they don't have minutes there, Professor. Is it, yes. uh, do you remember you hours. told 10 yeah. hours, we uh -huh. multiplied it by 60 and got 600 minutes. I do remember you told in one of uh, those uh, review mass question, if we don't have minutes, we can multiply. If we have minutes, we must put those. 60. Leave the minutes, minutes, yes. 
And in this case, the first one I did with 45 minutes, I did nothing with that number. With this one, I took the 10 hours and I multiplied it by 60 minutes in an hour. So 600 is my time in minutes. So my equation comes out to be 1,000 times 60 and minutes is 600. Does that help you understand it better? Uh -huh. Okay. Okay, but I'm telling, do you remember you told, if you don't have minutes, you can divide it volume on the on the hours and you get uh, milliliters per hour. If you don't have minutes, we don't have minutes here. We have hours and we have volume and we right. volume divide it on in hours. So it's a conversion. Get... It's a conversion. You have to change the hours to minutes. Mm -hmm. How did I change the hour to minutes, Annette? In one hour, 60 minutes. Okay, so how did I change 10 hours? Our, uh, oh, in uh, hours? In one I had, hour. I had 10 in, hours. How uh, did I make 10 hours into minutes? Uh, you you 10 uh, multiply for 60. Okay, and what did I get as my answer? A total or when you multiply minutes. 10 hours? 10 minutes, hours six, times 600, 600 minutes. And it's right there. So that became my formula right there. Yes, you are right. You're absolutely right. If it's minutes, leave it. If it's hours, it must be changed into minutes. And exactly that. Each minute, every hour is 60 minutes. So every hour you multiply it by 60. And 10 hours became 600 hundred minutes and that just filled in the formula to what it, here on the bottom okay okay so that is that um i do have another different couple little things that um i saw um some community things and these are some a little different um, they ask things a little differently. So um, I was given some questions that were similar and I figured them out and I put down the answers. You know, on your HESI, you've had, is it a safe dose type thing? Um, in community, they do have safe doses. In pediatrics, I haven't seen it. I don't know other courses because nobody's given me, you know, like samples. So because we have samples here, I was able to rework them, different numbers, and put them here. And we have other stuff to look at. Now, number two is an equation that some um, students have a hard time with. It's a multi-step equation, OK? So number one, we got to figure out, is this a dose, or is this mLs per hour, or is this drop per minute? Well, the doctor orders a medication. It's a dose, isn't it? So our dose, even if it's not just a regular number, our dose is 56 milligrams per kilogram per day. That's all you need to know. That's a dose. Don't figure anything else out yet, okay? And they sent you up. The medication is supplied. You have 10,000 units. And it's in 2.5 mLs. Do you see how I pulled out that stuff? I'm not done doing this yet. You took uh, first one from the second and second round from the first. We're doing the first or second? We're doing number two. Number two. Wait, you know, I mixed them up. You're right. Yeah. <laughs> Thank, Thank you. Mm -hmm. All right. 250. Thank you very much. 250 milligrams in 5 mLs. So you see a dose could be written any way. Mike's per kilo per minute is a dose that we would put that on top the same way. And the only other thing we need to know here to figure this out 
is the client weighs 66 pounds and it's three doses because the questions ask how much will the nurse give per dose? So we're going to figure out the day and then we're going to figure out a dose. So we've got a medication to be delivered. It's a dose. And we have to figure out kilograms and we got to figure out per day. And then we're going to figure out per dose. So let's go ahead and do this. This is why I like this sheet for you uh, to go over. So child weighs 66 pounds. I know that's 30 kilograms. It's one of those things that you just know. So 30 kilograms. We're going to give 56 milligrams per kilogram, which is 30, per day. That's my dose. What do we have on hand? It says there's 250 milligrams. And that came in a quantity of five mLs. So you're thinking, hmm, what do I do with this, right? Multiply the top, divide by the bottom, and that's going to equal per day the amount of medicine to be given. Okay? So, 56 times 30 times 5 is 8,400. And we're going to divide that by 250. Remember, milligrams over milligrams are gone. Your answer is only with the label left. It's going to answer mLs, which is what you want. So 8,400 divided by 250, 33.6 per day, per day, but they want a dose. How many times a day they're giving it? They say three times a day. So all we need to do is divide that by three times. And every time, this is what we're going to be given. This is the mLs per day. So divide it up. 11.2. Again, remember, go back to the problem. Do they want to the 10th? They want a whole number. Be careful. Sometimes they put a whole number where you think there's a 10th, okay? Did everybody, did no, everybody I got follow? 112. 112. I don't know. I got 112. 400 zero, zero, divided by 250 equals 33.6 divided by three equals 11.2. You have an extra zero on your 8,400. Do it again. Let me know you got it. Okay. <clears throat> I mean, this is the way we learn. Can we do another? Sure. I'll find another one, or I'll make another one up. I can't hear. You're cutting in and out. What did you say? I just got confused on this problem. Okay. okay. I, think, I, I, I think you're asking just for another equation like this problem. Is that true? Just shake your head. I think we didn't divide it on the... I again got 112. I uh, 56 milligram, I multiply 56 milligram, I multiply for 30 kilogram. It will be 1680. Uh, then I divide it, uh, I multiply for five and I got 8,400. Uh, uh, Yes. And then I divide it for 25. No, 250. 
two, ah, 250. Okay, and you so had an extra zero. Yeah. Or yeah. not a zero. That's so good yeah. no problem. Yes, yeah, sorry. No, no, no. I prefer you understand. It's not a problem. Yeah. Okay. Perfect. Now, let's make another one. Let's, we'll just do the same weight, 66 pounds, okay? Mm -hmm. And let's say we're going to give four doses now. And it's 50 milligrams per kilogram. And they sent you up something that has uh, 500 milligrams in five mls. How's that sound? Okay. Just off the top of my head. So <laughs> that's the information that when you're thinking of these problems, what you're going to pull out. So we know 50 milligrams times that's 30 kilograms i've already said that's what it is over 500 milligrams and we'll multiply it by it came in five mls again multiply the top divide the bottom so 50 times 30 times five equals, and we're dividing that by 500, equals 15 mLs. And this is per day. I want four doses. In the oh, end, I again, 50.4. I got, maybe I did not again, did something wrong. Again. Go ahead and recheck yeah. your multiplication. 50 so, milligrams. 50 Multiply times 30, 30 times 50. 5. Times 5. 7,500. Yeah. And I, got, I, I got 3.75 for it. Oh, I, I, now it's uh, <laughs> 15. I don't know. Okay. Every okay. Just... This is what I tell you. When you're doing a problem... Always uh -huh. do it twice. twice. If you don't get the answer the same time twice, you've done something wrong. Re-multiply it. As long as you lay out your oh. problem the way it should, you should be able to, to do it that way. So and then, then we just take 15, I'm divide it by four, and it comes out to be 375 and if I said round it to the nearest tenth, what would you give it? Uh, it will be 3.8. There you go. Does that help you all with that problem? It's not that hard. Now that you know what to do, again, don't look at it and go, oh, you don't know what to do here. It's confusing. No, break it down. Just break it down. Make it fun. Make it easy. You know, math is not that difficult when you make common sense of it. All right. Another thing I wanted to show you, because it had a different label, was number three. And I think that, um, you know, you get confused with, you know, what to do. So let me look at it a second myself. It's been a while since I've done this one. All right. So, all right. So number one, we got to figure out a dose on this. So the client needs to get 45 MEQs of potassium. That's what it is. And it came in a bag of 20 MEQs in 25 mLs. And that's just going to figure out how much. So this is a two-phase problem here. Do you see that? Because number one, you got to figure out your volume. And then it's hours. It's time. So that figures out your mLs per hour, okay? So this is a dual question. It's a harder question. So, and then let me see. Let me go ahead and start it. So we have 45 MEQs and we have 20 MEQs times 25 mLs. 
again, multiply the top, divide the bottom. So let's do that. 45 times 25 equals... Remember, MEQs get off and MLs is all that's left, which is what you're looking for, right? And we'll divide that by 20. So 56.25 MLs is what we want. Don't round it. Leave it alone. You might go the wrong way. Just leave it alone. Leave it where it's at. So now we need to figure out three hours. Remember the formula also has that 60 in it. So say double formula here, okay? That makes you a little confused for a second, doesn't it? So all we're gonna do is multiply the top and now, oops, hours that don't work, we'll times it by 60 and we'll make 180 minutes. Cross that off so we don't forget. Again, let's go ahead. 56.25 times 60. Equals 3375 three, divided by 180. And the answer is 18.75. And because you're giving MLs per hour, this will be a whole number. The answer will be 19. Are you guys starting to see the light? I have is, a this, is this helping? Yes, ma'am. Um, okay. How do you know when to like divide by the hours? What do you mean? Um, when I was solving, I forgot we still had to divide by three hours and then multiply it by 60. And I, um, I thought we were finished when we got 56.25. So what, okay, let me explain where that come from. So let's go back to the question and look at it to, so I can explain it. So they're telling you that you need to give 45 mls right and they're asking you you need to give it over three hours so you're like oh okay but we don't know mls per hour what, the ml the volume right any ml per hour problem has volume over time and minutes so we have a time here but we don't have the volume of the medicine that we need to give to get the volume of the medicine to deliver of a dose, first we're going to do our dose. Our dose is 45 MEQs. What's available, what's on hand is 20 MEQs and the quantity is 25 mLs. Then you have the dose. That's the mLs, the volume in mLs. Then we go ahead and do the ml per hour problem because you have to give it over three hours. Right. So okay. then we went and we did the problem, you know, fit it all in. <clears throat> now, students like to take shortcuts, divide it by three. I wouldn't do anything like that. Always work it out and there'll never be any sort of issue, uh, little mistakes from it. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. <clears throat> all right. Number five is confusing. Many students get confused with it. So that's why I'm. I'll go over this with you. You want to give a medicine. And the rate, the dose, is 2.5 mLs per hour. That's a dose. It doesn't tell you medicine. It just says that's the dose. So there's, in this question, it says mLs per hour. And you could go, oh, this is ml per hour question. What time? Is there any time in there? There's no time. That is a dose to be delivered. So our dose is 2.5 milligrams per hour. And what did it come in? Provided at the strength of 
I have 25 milligrams and it came in the quantity of 250 mLs. Now, let me show you how really easy that is. All right. Our dose is 2.5 milligrams per hour. And we have 25 milligrams in 250 mLs. Again, desire, have, quantity, formula. Now, your answer wants mLs per hour. You are already given per hour here. In some of your med surge classes, they'll say 2.5 milligrams per minute. You would multiply that one by 60 there because you want an hour in your answer. That is one of the harder questions. So just look at what do I want to get and what do I have? Minutes and hours don't match, just like milligrams and grams. So in this question, we don't need that. It's already hours. So multiply the top and divide the bottom. So it's 2.5 times 250. 625 divided by 25. You know our milligrams is gone. Now look at this. There's your hour. That's your mLs per hour. So we know we're getting the right answer in the end. So that's not going to confuse you on using a different formula. Okay? You always know. Always write your labels down. It will make a difference. So 625 divided by 25. 25 mLs per hour. How is that? Not hard at all, is it? And then if it was mics per kilo per minute, we would just times it by, in here, what kilogram? It's the same thing, mics per kilo per minute. Pulling out just the numbers, the dose. It doesn't have to make sense or have a label on it. It's 2.5 milligrams per hour. That's the dose to be delivered. Is everybody getting that one? Okay, good job. And I know this is hard. I know this is confusing. All right, let's see. All right, let's do number six, because it's a little different. Um, and it's talking about more of a safe dose. <laughs> Excuse me, I'm getting a runny nose. I don't want to be sick. All right. The client must receive a loading dose. No, no. A, excuse me. We're doing number six. A patient is taking a medicine daily that contains 50 milligrams in 25 mLs. The label tells us that the patient should not take more than 0 0.5 grams within 24 hour period. The patient has taken 25 teaspoons of the medicine in the past 24 hours. Is this patient in the safe range? Well, how would you figure this out? So we have 50 milligrams in 25 mLs and 0 0.5 grams is the maximum, and they've had 25 teaspoons. So there's a couple little conversion things that go on here. So we have 50 milligrams. It's in 25 mLs. So you have two milligrams per cc or mLs. Did you see that? So now I know what each is because they're saying they had 25 teaspoons. How many mLs is a teaspoon? Five. Mm -hmm. Five. So 25, no. yes. Ah. Teaspoon One teaspoon is five. Or five. Tablespoon 
tablespoon? 15. 15. So those little conversions come back to you, okay? So 25 times 5 mLs per each teaspoon, I'm going to figure out how much volume was there. Uh, 125. So 125 mLs. So 2 mLs, there are 2 milligrams in each ml right so if i have 125 if i divide this by let me see ml if i multiply it was 125 there's two milligrams in each i multiply it by two milligrams right every ml has two milligrams and it comes up to be 250 milligrams that they've taken in 25 teaspoons. And the top dose is 0 0.5 grams, which is 500 milligrams. Is this more than 500? No, it's a safe dose. They could take 50 teaspoons at that dose. Okay? Again, pull the question apart. What do I have? What do I know? How can I figure this out? It's a little bit more confusion. There's not a formula for it. Again, it's just critically thinking about it. Now, anything else you want to know? I are think we went over a lot. These, yeah, we did. Are these um, formulas equivalent for GTZ? GTT would be mLs per hour. Instead of Got 60, it. you put the drop factor. Again, mL an hour over time in minutes times the drop factor. I don't have drop factor formulas. It's the same thing as mLs per hour. Okay? Well, I'm going to send these recordings to y'all and to your professors. I see that we have some Professor A. We have um, Bethany on Tuesday, right? Uh, yeah. yeah. And then I have you guys that are mine. All right, I'll make sure that these things go out as soon as I get a recording. Thank um, you.